Hello everyone. Welcome to Tech Sharmat. In this session, we will discuss about another scenario for GET diagnostics, where we will uh, use the GET diagnostics statement in order to fetch the uh, IPMI escape messages. Now, what is IPMI escape messages? Whenever a query failed with CPF ID, with message ID CPF. Okay, whenever there is a message ID started with CPF letters, then that messages are considered as IBMI escape messages. These messages always generated in case of errors. Okay, so this thing we are going to fetch with the help of a get diagnostics statement. Okay, so to use this, uh, what we need, uh, we need at least some query because uh, for this we need to generate one specific error. Which is related to the IBMI escape message. So I will show you one scenario where I'm generating one specific error that generates a CPF related error. So after that, we will uh, perform uh, the program. We will walk through the program and we'll see whether it is working. Uh, like we will see like how it is uh, take, uh, fetching the messages ID from the uh, for the CPF errors. Okay. So let me show you one table query first because there is a quite a uh, bit different table we are using this time. Previously we were using students, but he but here what we are using, we are using table students two. Okay, so create table students two where we have two columns: student ID and student name. Student ID is integer primary key. Student name is varchar two fifty five. Okay, so student ID is primary key. This is the only difference Be because previously we were not using primary key, but this time we are using primary key. Now, if you remember, primary key is a key where we are not supposed to insert duplicate values, and whenever we insert, whenever we try to insert a duplicate value in the file, then it generates the uh, CPF IBMI escape messages. So this is the one scenario which we can uh, generate today. In order to fetch the IBMI DB2 message ID one. Okay, so here you can see we have one column student ID integer primary key, and this primary key uh, we are using with student ID, so we are not supposed to insert uh, student ID repetitive student ID or duplicate student ID. Second column is uh, just a normal column where we have varchar two fifty five characters. So there you can insert anything. It is up to you. So this is the table that I have already created. So right now I'm not creating it again because this table already exists. And if I show you the data in this table, then you will see there is some data. So let me run this. Select star from Sharmit one, which is my library name slash, and my file name is students two. And hitting enter. Once we hit enter, you will see there are three records in this file: one zero one, one zero two, and one zero three. That is fine. So just keep in this, uh, keep this in mind that we have three records with ID one zero one, one zero two, and one zero three. Because from program we are going to repeat the same record, which is one zero three. Okay. Let me show you same thing here. What will happen if I try to insert one zero three again from this query? What is query? Insert into Sharmit one, which is my library name slash students two. This is my new file name. Values one zero three and one zero three name. If I hit enter here, you will see it is generating a message error. Duplicate key value specified. If I take F one here, you will uh, see all the details for that message. All right. So we got uh, the information that yes, whenever we are trying to insert duplicate value, it is generating error. Because we are using primary key, uh, student key, student ID as primary key. So let's jump to the program now. We'll discuss the program. So in this program, this is the statement that we are going to fetch, and it holds the IBMI escape messages ID. So statement is DB2 message ID one. Now, after that, what we are doing? We are declaring few variables. First variable is GD info of character ten. Second variable is result where care forty. So this first variable, how we will get to know about the data type and length for this variable? So for that, what we will do? 
what we will do like we will go to the IBM high official website and search for the get diagnostics uh, table and then you can simply search for this um, DB2 message ID one and whenever you find wherever you find this uh, ID in a table uh, corresponding to that you will also find the data type and length of it this so these information you can fetch from the IBM official website okay so this is one variable that I have declared variable name you can keep any it is up to you second variable we are using although this is not required so let me delete this first because we are not going to use this anymore okay so this is the first variable afterwards what we are doing we are setting the commitment control to star none so I just set the commit equals to star none and then we are trying to insert the data because we want to generate the uh, CPF error messages so here I am executing exec SQL insert into shermit1 slash students2 value 103 and 103 name we know that this record is already existing let me double check it again so I will run one query select star from shermit1 slash students2 hitting enter and you will see 103 is already there so if you go and check this you will find insert into shermit1 slash student2 values 103 is already there available okay just after executing this query we will check for the get diagnostics so <coughs> if you check the get diagnostic value you will find that it is retrieving the message uh, id which is db2 message id 1 and syntax is same you just need to write exec sql get diagnostics condition 1 and we are trying to fetch db2 message id 1 into host variable gd info okay so it will fetch this value db2 message id 1 and store it into the host variable gd info and then we are printing the value gd info this is quite simple and then setting the star inlr to star on so let's quickly compile this program and call this so once you call it you will find it is generating the message id cpf5034 now you remember if you remember cpf ids are those ids which are generated when ibmi uh, escape messages are occurred or generated okay so by this id you can easily identify which type of issue was occurred during the insertion operation so there are many developers who are uh, using this uh, cpf id for some kind of validation maybe in cl or anything so in that case maybe it is useful for you so you can simply fetch out the value with the help of message id one and then you can uh, use it into your uh, sklrpg program now my question is what will happen if i try to insert the record which is not there okay let me add new record 104 is not there so let me insert 104 and then simply compile this program and call this so once i call this this time it is not returning anything it is returning blank why because there is no record available in the file uh, with the id 104 and we just inserted this record right so in this case in case of success there is no issue it will just accept the uh, data means it will process the data and there is no CPF ID generated because CPF error messages are generated only when there is a no record available or uh, like whenever we are trying to uh, perform the SQL operation that encounters the uh, IBM escape messages okay so in that case only it will uh, print blank string otherwise it will print the uh, specific CPF error message so you can see cpf 5034 and otherwise it will print the blank message okay so this is how we can utilize this uh, get diagnostics in order to fetch the ibmi messages or uh, sorry in order to get the db2 message id 1 so let me repeat the few things again what is db2 message id 1 these are the messages id related to the ibmi uh, IBMI CPF escape messages and these messages are generated only in case of query failure not in ca case of query success we just saw that whenever a query executed successfully it is generating blank string right 
there is no CPF IT. But in case of any kind of failure, we cover one scenario where we are trying to insert duplicate value. So in that case, it is returning a specific CPF ID. To use this, you just need to declare one variable, go for get diagnostics and use the same statement here, get diagnostics condition one, and then you can fetch the DB2 message ID one into GD info. Then simply display the message and set the NLR to star on. So this is how we can utilize get diagnostics in order to fetch the DB2 message ID one. I hope this session is clear to all of you. In the next session, we will discuss few more things. So thank you for watching TechShare method.